Hello, Karina Essa here from Social Media Worldwide. And in this video, I want to share with you how to track your Facebook campaigns with Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a website analytics service provided by Google that allows you to collect information about your website traffic sources, measure your results, as well as analyze your results. There are many benefits to using Google Analytics when running Facebook advertising campaigns and why it's one of the preferred analytics platform for advertisers. The first benefit is that it is a free service so you won't have to pay any monthly fees to use the service. Another benefit is that it allows you to have a better understanding about who your audience is such as their age, gender and location and who your business appeals to. By knowing who you attract you'll know how to craft better marketing messages based on who you're addressing in your campaigns. A third benefit is that it is quite user-friendly. You don't need to be tech savvy to use it and you don't have to be a website developer to install Google Analytics either. A fourth benefit is that it it allows you to see what actions your visitors are performing on your website, which tabs they click on and which pages they visit so you can have a better understanding of what they're after and what you should optimize. Lastly, thanks to Google Analytics, you can see where your website traffic is coming from, if it's coming from specific social networks or other sources so you can make an informed decision on which traffic sources is best for you to invest time and money in. In order to use Google Analytics, you will need to have a Gmail account and be signed in. Then go to analytics.google.com forward slash analytics forward slash web and on the right hand side click on sign up to create your account then fill in the information requested it will ask you whether you want to track a website or a mobile app so make sure you choose accordingly then name your account since you can track multiple websites under one google analytics account you can name your account something generic such as your full name or your business name then name the website you will be tracking so if your website was gocogroup.com then under web website name you would put GoCo Group. Then add the website URL you want to track and from the drop down menu select the industry this website is in. Then select the time zone you want the reporting to be in. So when you check your metrics and it gives you specific time frames you'll know which time zone these time frames are in. Then leave all the boxes ticked and click on get tracking ID. The next step is to log into your WordPress website and install the tracking ID with a plugin. Therefore, once you've logged into your website, click on plugins and add new. Then in the search bar, type in Google Analytics. When you do, you'll have the option to install various plugins. Ideally, you want to pick the plugin that has the most positive reviews, such as Google Analytics dashboard for WordPress by exact metrics. Once you've made your selection, click on install now and then click on activate. Then on the menu on the left hand side, click on Google Analytics, then general settings then authorize plugin. Then click on get access code, which will then ask you to log into the email account you use to create your Google Analytics account. There you'll find your code, simply copy and paste it into the box provided, click on save access code, and then click on save changes. Your Google Analytics should now be installed. To make sure it's been installed properly and is working, go back to your Google Analytics account, click on home and click on real time and then click on overview. Then go to the website you're tracking using Google Analytics to see whether it's picking up that there's currently a visitor on your website. The real time feature in your Google Analytics account should pick up that there's a website visitor. If it does, it means your tracking is installed and working properly. The Google Analytics dashboard is quite user friendly. When you click on the home tab, it will give you an overview of the activity on your website. Users stands for the number of people who have visited your website according to the time frame you select from the drop down menu. Session stands for the number of group interactions one visitor takes on your website. In other words, whatever a visitor does on your website, such as browsing pages, downloading resources, purchasing products, etc., before they leave equals one session. Then the bounce rate is the percentage of people who leave your website straight after landing on your website without browsing further. A high bounce rate is bad. It means that the people who are visiting your website are not interested in what they're seeing. It could be because your website is not appealing or the people you're targeting are not the right people, for example. Then the session duration is the amount of time a visitor stays on your website. Below, you'll see a graph that displays how you acquire your visitors according to traffic channel, source slash medium, and referrals. Traffic channel is a group of several traffic sources using the same medium, such as organic or social. Then you'll see another tab called source slash medium which stands for where your traffic came from specifically. This section would include specific traffic sources you're tracking using a Google Analytics tracking link you created. The third tab under how
how you acquire users is referrals. Referral traffic reports visits that came from sources outside Google's search engine. It's like a recommendation from one website to another. It could be traffic from a website you published content on or from social media posts, for example. Other information you can see includes the time of day you get the most traffic. The darker the color in a time slot, the more users you have on your website during that time of the day, as well as information about the countries most of your traffic comes from and the devices your visitors use to access your website. On the Home tab, the other useful information provided about your website is the specific pages your visitors go to when on your website. Another tab in Google Analytics that you will need to get familiar with is the Audience tab. When you click on this tab, it will provide you with further information about your audience such as their demographics, in other words their age and gender as well as their interests. This is very useful information to collect when setting up Facebook advertising campaigns so you can have a better idea who is best to target. Finally, another tab in Google Analytics analytics that is worth exploring is the conversions tab. Under this tab you will see goals. Goals in Google Analytics allows you to track specific actions visitors take based on what you want to know. For example, if you want to measure how many people signed up to your newsletter, you can create a goal for that specific action. So every time a visitor subscribes to your newsletter, Google Analytics records it as a conversion. To set up specific goals, click on conversions then click on goals, then click on overview and click on setup goals, then click on new goal. You can then choose between all the existing templates available or if you don't see what you want to track in the list, choose custom. For the purpose of this demonstration, we'll choose newsletter sign up and then click continue. You will have to name your goal for future reference so you know what it refers to. For example, you could name it subscribed to newsletter or if you were giving away a free report in exchange for people's name and email address, you could name your goal downloaded free report. Then under type, you have to decide what you want to measure. In other words, whether you want to measure based on where they land after they completed the action, such as the thank you page, if you were measuring how many newsletter subscribers you were acquiring, or how long they stayed on a page, or how many pages they visited, or a specific event such as watching a video. In the example here, because we're measuring the number of newsletter subscribers, we'll choose destination and insert the thank you page they land on after becoming a newsletter subscriber. You can assign a monetary value when someone subscribes or leave it blank and click on save. You can create as many goals as you want so Google Analytics starts measuring specific conversions relevant to your business. In general, when looking at Google Analytics, you want to look for things that stand out. Sometimes you'll find your traffic categorized under direct traffic source. This is where Google Analytics puts the traffic they can't identify where it came from. You can reduce the number of people categorized under direct traffic by creating Google tracking links. To create tracking links for Google Analytics, it's simply the process of adding some code to your links. To create tracking links, simply go to this link. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, I've got an even better bonus for you. If you want to know how to leverage the power of Facebook even further, I've got my Facebook account optimization video tutorial. I'm going to play a preview in just a second. Click the tab on this video and it's going to take you to where you've got instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get another three videos from our best-selling Social Media 360 Home Study course. And it's not going to cost you anything. In these additional three bonus videos, I'll reveal how to leverage the power of Facebook ads for more traffic and leads, how to monetize your Facebook marketing efforts, and the common mistakes to avoid on Facebook to experience results much faster than anyone else. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Click on the thumbs up, it really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you'll see our newest videos. See you soon. Hello and welcome to this video titled How to Create and Optimize a Facebook Page. So if you don't have a Facebook page yet or would like to create a new one, then just follow this tutorial. So first log into your Facebook profile because you need to have a profile in order to create a Facebook page. Then click on the drop down menu on the top right hand side and go to create page. Then choose what it is that you want to promote on that Facebook page. What kind of business is it? Is it a local business? So if you have a local business that you want to promote on your Facebook page, pick this category because the template is different. Is it a company, organization or institution? Is it a brand or a product? Are you a public figure? You might be a speaker, a coach, you might be a singer. Then pick this one. Entertainment. That's if you are in the entertainment industry or is it a cause or a community? So is it a charity, for example, then you would pick that one. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just go and choose brand or product. That's the most generic one. And then choose the category. So is it an app that you're promoting? 
baby goods so I will just go and click on website let's pretend this is an online business I'm promoting so I'll put website and then put your brand name or your product name so I'll just put test and then click on get started then add a profile picture. Now, if you are the face of the brand, then you would put a headshot of you. Make sure that the headshot of you is a close-up. It's not a cropped picture. Make sure that it's not pixelated. It's a nice picture of you smiling with no messy or busy background. So you really want to look professional. When you upload a picture, make sure that it's 170 times 170 pixels. If the picture you upload doesn't fit well enough, then you can go to pickresize.com and resize your pictures.